Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to walk through just kind of the, a little bit about the new Amabuntu DE2, uh, which is Debian Edition 2 1.05 build. This was just released. It's kind of a, a forerunner to the DE3. Now the DE2 is still running on Debian Stretch. So this is based on 9.9 .9, and it comes with some bug fixes that are uh, there are bug fixes that are are probably ones that you are going to want if you are interested in this distribution and you can't wait for the official DE3 to come out, which is going to be based on Debian 10. So this is actually backporting some of the fixes that they've done into the, the DE2. And so one of the things that they've done uh, first, of course, is based on Debian 9.9. .9. They've added Redshift and Clipit utilities. They've added the ability to switch between a light and a dark theme, fixed some grub and EFI partitioning and a few um, um, partitioning issues. So I'll grub and EFI loading and some partitioning issues. Not a whole lot of other things. Um, a new update to the Firefox ESR and uh, some other systems as well. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and uh, jump on into the desktop. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk through the final steps of the installation, which I thought were good enough to merit its own video. So we've installed this and we've not done anything else. This is the very first login. So on your first login, it's going to walk you through a lot of settings that is going to set up your system. So here is our screen. Thanks for installing I'm Ubuntu Debian Edition 2. We hope it, it will meet your expectations. And it says remark, before you can play with it, you need to fill in the various post installation configuration forms. Like what's that mean? Well, it's going to give us a bunch of prompts where we can choose the types of things that we install and set up. And then we'll have a quick look. So select the version of the application menu that meets your needs. So application menu, there's a classic and here is a whisker. They don't actually change here until I, I go through this. Uh, we also see what is the most appropriate image version you need. I'm not sure exactly what this one's going to do. I, I honestly have no clue. So maybe a little bit more information about that would be good. Uh, this is going to be, you know, which wallpaper would you like to start with? So there's a variety of wallpapers to choose from. I kind of like that one there. I kind of like that number two as well. Let's see. Let me, my number one is. That one's cool too. So then we can enable automatic login. We can start G speech. So text to speech every time the computer starts, which is kind of annoying. All right. So there we are. Now we are going to determine the Cairo doc. So that's the bottom doc. So we can activate the doc or not. We can lock the Ubuntu, Ubuntu's default doc. And then activating the taskbars, activating the workspaces. I don't use workspaces, taskbars, sure. Um, and then we can activate the dark theme or keep it as the light theme. So we'll go ahead and do this. And then the next option is which version of the Cairo doc. So all is for those wanting access to all applications. I want to see what this looks like. I generally use the simple one, which has just a variety of applications, but it's not overkill. The basic is for kids, I guess. I really want to see what this one does because one of the criticisms I'm going to have about this distro is there are so many applications. Now there is a good thing to that in that if you're new to Linux, you want to get a a feel for how much stuff there actually is under the hood of a Linux system. Hey, it's actually pretty good for that. So let's just go ahead and click on that. We'll see what we get. It looks like it's okay. It looks like it's not super overkill. That's good news. And then here we can choose to install various non-free software packages. So depending on where you are, this may or may not be legal, etc. Um, so if you're in a country that requires software patents, um, you know, be aware of that. So check your individual laws where you happen to be. Uh, so Codex, you can do uh, Skype, uh, or you can just use Jitsi, which is already pre-installed. Uh, there's TeamViewer. We have, this is the first time I've ever actually seen on the installation. I've never actually seen Arial fonts. Now this is the the Arial Microsoft fonts is the TTF MS core fonts. 
and the um, uh, Calibri fonts. These are the MS Vista fonts. So this is actually the first time I've ever seen an installer which just has a simple push button to install these. That is actually kind of epic. So let's just go ahead and do that. Of course, we did not install everything, so it's doing its, it's, doing its thing here. Now, while this is doing its thing and running its applications, let's just go ahead and do some brief touring here. Uh, one thing I think I want to do is let's just look at our system resources first. All right, so here we got HTOP installed. So here's HTOP. And so we can see here with HTOP, we're running at 500 megabytes while we are installing software. Keep in mind, we are actually actively installing software right now. So that's actually a really good system, and that's why you might want to look at this. This is specifically designed to bring life back into old systems. So let's just go ahead and close that. So now do we want to remove unnecessary languages? So it comes with a lot of languages. So yeah, let's go ahead and remove these. And then we're going to install additional components of United States English and make sure that the English language is set as the default system language. So they're doing a lot of these little steps that, uh, that might be a little bit more difficult to use. Now, let's get back in while it's finishing this up. Um, the purpose you might want to use this distribution, number one reason is you are revitalizing an old computer. This will run on 32 and 64-bit computers. It's going to run on a lot low system specs, and it does look very nice. So you get a very attractive-looking system here uh, on your low-spec computer. Here is our whisker menu there. We can do this. Now, the second reason is, as I said, if you are new to Linux and you want to get a better feel for what Linux can do, the abilities and options and software applications we have, it is going to be absolute overkill for most people, but it is actually going to be um, just right for a person who's just coming to Linux and trying to figure out what is actually in this distribution. And hey, how about available in Linux itself? Now, of course, I'm right-clicking here on the desktop, which gives us our, our basic context menu. And uh, our applications is our entire application menu. It's a streamlined version of what is up here. So if you're using your whisker menu, this is kind of your favorite, most used applications. We can search for applications. And then over here, we have various settings um, and categories and things that we can select and look at the individual applications. So we're just going to use the right click menu here because it's quicker to see on a glance what it is. First thing we notice, oh no, they did it. They pre-installed Wine. I don't like Wine being pre-installed on my distributions. The reason is you don't always have a need for it and it will allow you to run Windows executables and that means that yes Windows viruses could in theory run on your Linux system if you have Wine pre-installed. You should install Wine if you have a reason to install Wine. It should never be installed on a distribution. That should have been an option that we find in those various pop-ups that we get asking what type of software we would like to install. That being said, we have just a boatload of other software, including probably too much redundancy. In fact, the only place I've seen more redundancy is in Nopix, but at least in Nopix defense, it's trying to be an all-in-one live key system, so they intentionally have that. This here, they are trying to introduce you to a lot of different applications, so we do have a lot of... Uh, we do have a lot of, of overlap in the tools. So what do we mean by this? Uh, development tools, here are these guys, um, can be somewhat compatible. Here's just your uh, education things, like Stellarium is pretty cool, I like that. Games, of course, we do have Play on Linux and we have Steam, which is good. But now we get into graphics. Uh, we have Darktable, which if you are into photography, you're going to want to install Darktable. If you're not into photography, it's going to be completely pointless for you. So you probably don't want to run that. We have an ebook viewer. That's good. Uh, I don't know what Photo X is. We do have GIMP. We have two scanning utilities, Simple Scan and G-Scan to PDF. We have Inkscape, Libre Draw. Home Sweet 3D, never seen that one before. 
All right, we we don't have Blender. I'm just I'm so hurt. We don't have Blender, but we have everything else I've never heard of. We have three different web browsers: uh, Chromium, Empath. I think Empathy is a web browser, right? Oh no, I'm sorry. That's not a web browser. That's a VoIP. Go away now, dude. Die. Go away. Close. Close. Apparently, I can't close it. I've opened an application. I cannot close. Oh, well, we'll let it do its thing for a second there. All right, we have Chromium and we have Firefox installed by default. We also have in here uh, Gpotter, which is good for using our um, uh, podcasts. We do have two chat, app chat applications, HexChat and Pigeon. We have Jitsi. We have Transmission and uh, Qubit Torrent, so two torrent applications. Um, Dude, why is this thing not going away? All right, close you. Can I close you? I, I don't know what's up with this thing. It is frozen and dead. Oh, it's waiting for me to do that, I guess. Just close. Close. I don't care. Thank you. All right, so under applications, let's go ahead and continue to look back through. Multimedia, we do have two CD burning applications, Bersario and XF Burn. We have VLC and then just a variety of other different media players on here. We don't have Rhythmbox, which is funny. That's one we would expect. Most distros come with that. Uh, here is our no free software. So let's see what we got. Let's if we click on this. We got so it already. It, so it's giving us these these redundant menus that I probably don't need at this point. So I've already installed the Calibra fonts. Let's go ahead and click on this guy here, and it's going to ask us, do we want to install Adobe? It'd be nice if we had the ability to clean up the menus. I mean, I know we can go in and edit the menus, but um, it'd be nice if we had the ability inside the system easily to do that. Now, once you run those early runner, the, the early um, screens to select all the different options, we don't have a good way to go back and rerun that. And so that is, I would like to see that. Um, here we have Calibri, we have Abbey Word and the full LibreOffice suite. So we have a little bit more redundancy in our office suites. And here's inside of our system. Of course, we've already looked at our, our um, usage is, is very light. Inside of our settings here, we can go into our settings manager and inside of here, we can make basic system adjustments. I am not a fan of how hard it is to grab those corners and edges. All right, so here, um, this guy here is will allow us to activate the taskbar workspace or the dark theme. So that is an option we have. Under tools, this is a good system. We have a boot repair bleach bit to clean up the system di disk. We have system backup, and then we have a variety of different configuration files for various printers. We have flat pack. Uh, customizability here, USB formatters, USB creators, just a lot of different tools inside of here. A device manager is present. We actually have uh, system utilities for brother printers and for HP printers installed by default. I did not see any other printers there as well. So you can kind of see that we do have a lot of options. Uh, it might be a little bit too much overkill, but I don't know. I think that's kind of up to the individual user. All in all, though, uh, Emabuntu is it's a decent distribution if you're trying to figure out what all is under the hood of Linux and if you need a good flashy system that is set up and configured out of the box that you don't need to uh, you don't need the, the latest computer the, to run. It will run on old computers. That is one of their core things, two core principles of this group. Number one, revitalize old computers and number two, is they're going to want to help new Linux users. And I think that they do accomplish both of those tasks. They have an installer that is easy to use for a basic newbie. They have a lot of applications here, probably too many applications, but it'll give you the chance to experiment with what's under the hood. You know, how do you know if you want to use LibreOffice over Abbey Word, whatever else? Well, you won't know until you actually get in there and 
play around with all of them to figure it out. So it is good that they have these options if you're a new Linux user. If you're a seasoned guy and you already know which applications you want to use, then it's probably not going to be for you. And if you have the latest computer that you're not worried about system resources, there's probably other distributions you're going to like a little bit better. But all in all, I think Emma Ubuntu has accomplished its two core tasks well, which is restore old computers and help basic users figure out Linux. With those, hey, kudos to you. You have a great distribution. So let me know your thoughts and your comments down below. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.